Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, as today is final day for Luke Littler, yeah, if you're following the darts, well, Luke, good luck out there mate, 16 years old, unbelievable, and that is uh, going to be one hell of an achievement if he does win the World Championship today, but... It's a big day in relation to that, but it's also a big day because once again, it's a double upload on here. So if you haven't checked out video number one from earlier on today, go and check it out right here. I will leave a link for you guys at the top right hand corner of the screen and you can check out what was said earlier on. But as usual, part two tends to be much more heavy because things start happening across the day, left, right and center. And we've got quite a bit to cover. Quite a lot has happened since we've done the video earlier on today. So let's get right into it. But before we do, to catch all the content as it drops do not forget to hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell um to be uploaded of every single video that gets uploaded much appreciated and um let's get cracking let's get cracking so conor gallagher there was a bit of news that came out earlier today and i have to say i'm not surprised although i think this gives an inkling to where things might be heading. But we also need to have a little bit of a reality check because I feel like many people are taking this like it's the be all and end all and that's it. No, 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 no. I don't know not how people haven't seen this, but let's get into it. Let me explain. So here's latest on Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher is staying at Chelsea in January and will not be leaving in this window. This has come from Rahman Osman. Very well connected Chelsea journalist he's in the press room right um and and he's recently come out on the block let's say as one of the journos that are affiliated with Chelsea so you'd think fairly reliable and um Conor Gallagher staying at Chelsea this January fantastic fantastic 100% fantastic but does that mean he's not going to get sold no this isn't the news that is going to cement everything in stone. The only thing that's going to cement everything in stone is if we hear Conor Gallagher has signed a new contract. That's not happened. And it hasn't happened for a reason. But this doesn't surprise me. Conor Gallagher wants to stay at Chelsea. I truly believe Conor Gallagher is in a position where he will happily run down his contract. Happily. This also tells us that Pochettino is staying in the job up until the end of the season. Because if, they, if Chelsea were logically and realistically looking to change Pochettino, po po Pochettino um, they would happily get rid of Gallagher, of Gallagher now. But even then, has there been any team that has come in with legit bid on the table? Boom, we want Conor Gallagher. Not yet. And it's still very early in the window. Who knows what's going to happen? So us hearing this, I presume, has come from the player side. Conor Gallagher staying at Chelsea and yet yeah, not leaving. Absolutely. You go to Conor right now and you best believe he's saying, I'm not going anywhere. Because that's what he'd done last summer. Mate, he was meant to be sold to Everton for 45 million, if you remember. Tottenham were interested. Um, West Ham were interested. Chelsea were happy to get rid. It was Connor and his entourage. It was him that was going, no, I'm not going anywhere. He was told by his dad, if I'm not mistaken, no, we're not, we're not accepting this, no way. Stay put. So he stayed put. Now he's getting played nonstop by Pochettino. He's one of the main men. He's got no reason to leave. Why would he leave? Personally, I did think that if a bid comes in, that Connor might just look at the bigger picture and go, look, you know, I want to stay, but for my career, um, for the fact that clearly the club doesn't want to hold me, um, if Poch gets sacked at some point, which is I, I also thought could be a possibility and why it would drive it, then Gallagher would probably go, I don't want to go, but if something comes in, I'll entertain it. But this, I think, is a confirmation. Poch isn't going anywhere until the summer. And I'll be honest, I think in the summer, there will be a change. 
we'll see how results go. Because if Chelsea all of a sudden somehow get their act together and we start playing and, and we start picking up results, then you have to be honest, there's a case for Pochettino to go, why should I get sacked? Look at what I did. You know, I turned it around. It, it, he could, he could. Not to say it's impossible, he could. But from the way that Chelsea are moving, from the way of the decisions that we've made for, for, for what we've done, for how it's been, I just don't see that changing drastically like that like you flick on the switch so i personally think pochettino's position at the end of the season could be a discussion and i do reckon that he could be let go and if that were to happen that's when gallagher doesn't have a manager who's willing to play him every single week and at that point i think it could be a case where someone comes in for him for maybe a little less than what they would have to pay right now and chelsea would probably entertain it so this is the latest with conor gallagher staying at chelsea this january like I've said, I'm pretty sure due to the player side, not a problem. Fantastic. I am totally on board with that. But also means Pochettino sticking around, it seems. So let me know your thoughts down below. Now, Fraser Fletcher has informed us on this at the same time too. Again, as reported a hundred times previously, Conor Gallagher's preference is to stay at Chelsea. Exactly. Do you get it now? So anyway. Let's move. That's the latest on Connor. So, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm going to show you, and then we're going to get into it. Check this out. Chelsea could look at players who could give England's Ben Chilwell competition for the rest of the season via Matt Law. Do we need another left back? Now, I do have to mention something here. I don't normally do this, but it's deserved because I've seen countless examples, and this has been I'm on the money. Check this out. This is from Darko saying a new left back is pending soon and a new centre back. Keep your eyes peeled. This was mentioned in October 24th. Absolutely on the money. Darko, I know you're watching. Fair play. He's nailed that months ago. We didn't think we'd be going for a left back. Let's be honest. I didn't. I had no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Up until today, if I'm honest, I thought a left back, well, not, not really. Why would we, you know? One clue I did get was Louis Beneventi, if you remember, who had that conversation with Simon Phillips and Alfonso Davis was mentioned. That came out of left field. I wasn't expecting that. But when I saw that, that's when I came on and I told you guys, okay, do you now see, in terms of the experience and pedigree that I need in this Chelsea team, an example would be a player like Alfonso Davis. Albeit, he is actually still quite young, crazy enough. But what he's done in his career speaks volumes, right? And that's what you need to fall back on and what you need in this team, what we need in this team, what these young players need around them especially someone of their age bracket. That would actually help even better. So when I heard that, I was like, Alfonso Davis, why? You know, are we going for a left back? That's a little bit, mm. all of a sudden, now we're hearing talk about a left back. But who can we go for? Realistically, look, I I'd love Alfonso Davis, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that's honestly what the sort of play that we do need to do. But it does seem like that the news here is someone that's going to give competition, right, to Ben Chilwell, not necessarily take his place immediately because I feel like that's what would happen. So when we're talking about competition, it's not someone's going to walk in and take his place. It's going to be someone that I feel like will be there alongside. And i got to be honest, this is where I might have to start running a little agenda, um, personally. And, you know, we'll keep eyes on AFCON, but... Um, <coughs> eight nori. <coughs> Sorry, coughed. <laughs> Look, um, obviously, for, for, for me, it would be great, yeah? Um, I want to get your thoughts on that. But for me, yeah, it, to, see, to see an Algerian play for Chelsea would be mind-blowing for me. Yeah, it's never happened. So I, I, I honestly, I wouldn't mind, yeah? I wouldn't mind having an eight Nori compete with Ben Chilwell. That would be tremendous. But I would be happily willing to put that to one side if it meant just getting quality in. Someone like Alfonso Davis just... That would be class. That would be class. Yeah, that's exactly the sort of profile that we need in this team. So, um, personally, that's what I reckon. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And this is Alfonso Davis um, talking, um, and you can't hear right now, but this is him talking in a clip about, if I'm not mistaken, um, about his dad. 
And he was mentioning about how his dad um, is a Chelsea fan. And because of that, he used to watch a lot of Chelsea. He says it in this clip. So, Just saying. Anyway, a left back that we do have. Check this out. Breaking, Borussia Dortmund are optimistic of signing Ian Matson. Well, obviously, this is going to happen. Um, I feel like that's a given. So I'm expecting um, that deal to happen very, very soon. Let's wait and see. Um, and when that does go through, we will be wishing Ian Matson all the best over at Dortmund. And I think he'd kill it over there. So it would be very, very good for him. That's that. Now, we have news on a sponsor. Unbelievable. Yes, we've got a sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable scenes. Let's check it out. Here it is. Chelsea has agreed to a new sponsorship deal with crypto company Bing X. Bing X will become the shirt sleeve sponsors for the rest of this season and training kit sponsors after that. Ah, uh, which means it's goodbye to Trivago. Man. I'll be honest, I've never connected with a sponsor as much as Trivago since Samsung, without a doubt. Now, Samsung, because Samsung was what we had on our shirts when we won everything, yeah? <laughs> so it's special in that context, but, and they stuck with us for years. But Trivago, Trivago done the one thing that I was hoping for and I didn't expect. When Chelsea went through sanctions and every single brand, company, you name it, were all thinking about dropping Chelsea like a fly, yeah? They were all falling down like flies. They were all running away. They were all like, no, we don't want bad press, bad publicity, this is bad for our image. Even our kit supplier, even Nike, were looking to distance themselves for a little bit, right? Only Trivago stuck with us. It was only Trivago that literally from day one, throughout that madness, not once did they say we're backing out. They stuck with us. They said we ain't going anywhere. We will remain. And now we got to see them go. And I, I, like I've said it previously. I would have loved to have them as the shirt sponsor. I, that would have that would have been beautiful. Yeah. And they've been our training sponsor for the last couple of seasons um, or just just a bit longer, I reckon. Um, and look, for that, I can only say, and honestly, I'd want to give a standing ovation if it wasn't for me leaving the flipping screen, but standing ovation, Trivago, thank you for everything. I mean, obviously, you're a sponsor and you're providing the club money, so thank you. But for the values and for what you've done and for how you've conducted yourself and despite the bad TikTok videos we saw recently yeah, with terrible acting, I'll let you off because you're Trivago. And you've done that for, for, for Chelsea and you were with us from day one and you didn't budge. And for that, thank you very much. And you best believe for that, if I need a hotel, I'm coming to Trivago. <laughs> so thank you very much, Trivago. And it's going to be sad to see you lot go. Um, but we've got Bing X coming in right and matt law has decided to elaborate on this check this out updated and full story on chelsea's new sleeve sponsorship deal with bing x who in november last year proudly boasted of being a steadfast supporter of the russian crypto community oh yeah nice of you to stick that in there isn't it you see this is how you can tell matt law has lost all of his connections <laughs> He's, 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 he's not on good terms with the club. He's really not. Because if he was, he wouldn't write this. He would not write this. But he has. And look at how he's done it. I mean, but... but. So, Bing X uh, support the Russian crypto community. What has that got to do with anything? What? Because it's Russia. Because they're Russian. Come on. They're a crypto... Com they're a crypto company. A crypto community. You understand how crypto works, right? It's global. <laughs> Bitcoin, for example, doesn't just exist in one nation. It's everywhere. And Russia included. So, of course, they're going to support because it's good business for them, much like every other single country. But let's not start dipping into values and, and, and you know, politics and all that madness. Let's, let's, not open, let's not even open that door. Yeah, because the double standards will start flying about left, right and centre like crazy. Yeah, and I think everyone knows what that's all about. So... Matt Law literally trying to do something mad here, which is, uh, on top of that, crypto... How many, how many Premier League teams have a crypto uh, sponsor, by the way? 
Is it not 18 out of 20 Premier League teams who have at least a connection with a something crypto related? Well, forgot to mention that. Um, <laughs> so look, I, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. Why, why would I be? Why would I be? Um, they're, they're a sponsor. They're happy to come in. Other clubs have similar sponsors. We'll get it done. You know, simple as that. So that's that. That's them coming in to replace Trivago. Sad. But let me know your thoughts. Now, before we wrap up, a couple of things. Let's get into the latest on Andre Santos. Chelsea could send Andre Santos to the championship after a difficult loan spell at Nottingham Forest with Sunderland, West Brom and Hull City among the possible destinations. I mean, really, really, there's no one else, you know, oh man, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, if it's a club, I, what, what, who's, who's top of the championship right now, if I'm actually going to, because you know what, we need to set some sort of level here, who's top of the championship, it's, Leicester, right? Cassidy, fantastic. Top of the championship. If you're top of the championship, 10 points ahead. Bloody hell, Leicester are running away with it. Um, <laughs> look, it, right, basically, Leicester are running like a Premier League team right now, yeah? So it's not so bad over there. But if we're talking about West Brom, Sunderland, 5th and 6th, Harlan 7th, operating for playoff positions. Ugh. Fair play, Sunderland. They sound like they've gotten better since the Sunderland till I die days. Um, that was tragic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would love for him to be able to go and get proper first division football for, for experience, man, and for, and for development. Um, uh, I'm not underrating the championship. The, under, the championship is a good league, but I would like him to be able to try and operate at the best. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, it won't be a disaster, but I think we can do better. Basically, that's how I feel. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And let's move to the couple of stories popping off elsewhere before we wrap up this video, starting off with this insanity. Andre Onana has agreed to play two matches in the space of 24 hours. January 14th against Spurs. January 15th versus Guinea. This is an amicable agreement between the player, the club and the national team to maximise his playing time for Man United before AFCON. This is absolutely insane. This is incredible. Onana, what's the point? What is the point, by the way? So, I, 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 don't, I still don't get it. I, I was about to say something here, but he's, he's still going to make it for the first group game of the Africa Cup of Nations um, for Cameroon, right? Against Guinea. But the day before, he's going to be playing against Tottenham. What's the point? Why does he have to stick around till then? When you've got is it Bayinde? Bayinde is the, um, the, the Turkish goalkeeper that Man United have as the number two or the, the next guy that they can turn to. Why not just turn to him? When you're going to have to anyway. So just for the sake of the game against Tottenham, after that, what's going to happen? What, is Onana going to fly back and forth every single flipping day? Or not? No, he's going, to be with Af he's going to be at the AFCON. He's going to be with Cameroon. So why don't you just get that over and done with? Why actually hold him back? to play against Spurs, which he wants to do because he's so scared about losing his place because he's been playing so badly, when he's going to have to go anyway, and then he plays one game against Spurs, then he gets on a plane, heads off to the Ivory Coast. Do you know how long of a flight that is, by the way? <laughs> it's not next door. Let's just, let's just say that, yeah? If I'm not mistaken, trying to get from uh, the UK to the Ivory Coast is a minimum, is it a six-hour flight? I'm, I'm actually going to look this up. Flight time. I'm, I'm going to check. Six, six hours. Six hours. I was bang on the money. Bang on the money. And I improvised that, by the way. <laughs> six hour flight from the UK to the Ivory Coast. And then you step off the plane, you head to camp and you got to play. So what's that going to do for Cameroon? He's holding now. Now, it's not just affecting him. It's affecting Cameroon as well. You best believe they're not going to have a goalkeeper who is fresh, ready to go. He's going to have played the day before, had a six-hour flight, and now he's got to play the first game of AFCON, which is a big deal. It's incredible. It's bonkers. And Guinea are not rubbish. Let's just put that out there, by the way. Cameroon should be able to win, but they're not pants. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Honestly, I find this bizarre. And if I was Bayinde, I'd be fuming. 
I'd be like, what? So you don't trust me? Or what? I'd be, I, I, I'd want to go. If I was him, I'd be like, you, you clearly don't want me. You don't rate me. I'm out. See you later. Good luck. Good luck dealing with no goalkeeper then. How's that? I would I would be spiteful. <laughs> I would be spiteful if I was him. But anyway, unbelievable. I, th- I think it's ridiculous. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so anyway, let me know your thoughts on that. And I think Cameron will be affected. You best believe, yeah, this could go seriously left. He better have a good game against Spurs. And you best believe he better have a good game against Guinea. Because against Guinea... You're not dealing with Man United fans. You're dealing with Cameroonians. You're, you're dealing with, Af- with Africans. They won't take that lightly. If they got a goalkeeper back this late and in these circumstances by choice, yeah, and then he pulls off a stinker for Cameroon and he costs them a result or something like that, you best believe he's not going to hear the end of it. You know? Unbelievable. So let's wait and see what happens. Um, <laughs> let me know your thoughts. Now, to wrap up, uh, latest on Jaden Sancho. Sancho and Dortmund have reached a verbal agreement for his return to the club. The player is waiting for the final agreement between Dortmund and Man United. All parties want to finalise the deal quickly, which would allow Sancho to join up with Dortmund for their training camp in Marbella. Whoa, go on, Sancho. Um, not a bad place to go. <laughs> you know? So, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And as we know, it's more than likely going to happen on loan, with Man United paying part of the salary and um, a loan fee obviously paid to, paid to Man United. So Sancho heading off back home to Dortmund, should we say. I'm looking forward to seeing how it's all going to go. Let me know your thoughts down below. And I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. So, or a brand new couple of ones for that matter. Make sure you're here for that. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell to be notified of all uploads. Much appreciated. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Socials on the screen and in the description. I'll catch you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. In a bit. Take care. And peace.